You know how sometimes you go on a hike and you're like, there's no way this is gonna be worth it. It was worth it today. Today I've driven out to Banks Lake, which is in kind of the central eastern Washington region, and I'm going to be hiking up Steamboat Rock, which as the name suggests is a rock that kind of looks like a steamboat that's sitting here in the middle of the lake. It's a pretty popular hike. Several people have told me I need to come do this, and I was always planning on coming and doing it in the summer. But to be honest, I'm just kind of tired of waiting for summer. So I'm here today. It's a relatively really nice day. It's pretty cold, but it's beautiful there's like a dusting of snow. And the great thing about doing things in the winter is no one's around. No one is here today. And this is a really popular spot in the summertime, especially for camping. Can you guys hear all of these birds behind me? It's like I hit the record button and a hundred geese were like, let's go get in on that. Before I start heading up the rock, I wanna say thank you to Backcountry for sponsoring today's video. And keeping me warm, I'm wearing the Arcteryx Zeta LT jacket, which for starters, I need an entire wardrobe in this color. I love this color. This jacket is entirely waterproof. It's windproof. It goes perfectly over my insulating layer. I'm also wearing the Fall Raven Abisco trekking tight from Backcountry, which I've told you guys about before. These tights are amazing because they have this like grippy technical material on the knees and on the bum. So if you're sitting on rocks, scooting over rocks, climbing on things with your knees, those parts of the tights are reinforced. Backcountry has gearheads available 24 seven to help you find exactly what you need for your next outdoor adventure. They have all the big outdoor brands like North Face, Patagonia, Arcteryx, and they're partnered with the Nature Conservancy to help support its mission to protect lands and waters. And you can donate to the Nature Conservancy when you're checking out on the site. And they've given me a coupon code for you guys to get a discount. If you use the code Allison15, you'll get 15% off your first purchase. Some exclusions do apply, and I will have a link down below. Well, I think the easy part is done because the trail just turned into this. It's just rocks. According to the map, that's the way to go. I underestimated this hike a little bit. That last stretch, I was literally on my hands and knees crawling up just a whole bunch of rocks. I've, I'm filthy now, like muddy and dirty. I had to take a layer off. So just a heads up, if you come to do this one, you're gonna be doing a little bit of rock scrambling. I'm on the very, very last stretch. I've almost made it. Come all the way up here. This is deceptively hard, but the sun is starting to come out back there and I've got like 50 steps to go. So let's do this. This is so beautiful. Wow. We've got some snowy hills over on this side. And is that a cloud? Are we up in the clouds? Okay, so this was totally worth it. The view is insane. And it's kind of cool that I am the only person on this rock right now. There is literally no one else up here. I can see down to the parking lot and I can see my one lonely single car down in the parking lot. Like I've got the rock to myself. So the name of the city that I'm in is Electric City, which for starters is just the coolest name ever for a city. And I believe it has that name because this is where the historic Grand Coulee Dam is, which if you haven't heard of the Grand Coulee Dam, based on my very brief internet search to make sure I had this right, the Grand Coulee Dam was at one point the largest concrete structure in the world and it employed thousands of people during the depression era so it was like really really big for jobs but then also during world war ii i believe its hydropower played a huge part in powering aluminum and airplane production and some people i have no idea if this is true there are some people who say the grand coulee dam is one of the key factors in the allies winning the war is its ability to help production i'm not a historian i have no idea but yeah it's a pretty big deal and this city got named Electric City, which is awesome. It's starting to get just a little chilly up here. I had to get my hat on. I've just been taking some pictures as the sun is starting to dip. I've been trying to think of some other outdoor adventures I can do this winter. A lot of the trails around here right now require snowshoes because the snow is too deep, but I've never tried snowshoeing. And I've always imagined that snowshoeing is like walking with flippers on. Like, you know, when you have to just keep your feet like point it up and waddle around, which I know that can't be what it's like because people would have to be crazy to go walking through the mountains in flippers. 
snowshoers. So maybe I should try it. If you're a snowshoer, let me know what you think or if there are any tips for starting out. Also, I would love to know if any of you are solo hikers or backpackers. There are a lot of hikes around here that I would really like to do, especially in Northern Idaho, like back into the mountains. There are some like 10 mile hikes that are supposed to have really amazing views, but I know there's a lot of large wildlife back on those trails. And usually you're fine if you're in a group because you're making noise and you're less likely to sneak up on and startle an animal, which is how a lot of attacks happen. But when you're hiking by yourself, you're much more quiet. You're much more likely to get really close to something before they realize you're there. And I know you can carry bear spray, but I would just love to know if any of you are really avid solo hikers or backpackers, what precautions do you take with wildlife? I love hiking by myself in like the desert or up in areas like this because I can see everything. I feel like nothing's gonna sneak up on me. But when I'm hiking in the woods and I hear a rustle in the trees, I always wonder like, is that a moose? Is that a bear? Okay, getting down is way easier, obviously. I mean, it always is, but yeah, going up that thing, that was a challenge. I'm so ready for longer days again, because one thing that's difficult about hiking this time of year is you have to be headed down by like 3.30 at the latest because it gets dark and you probably don't wanna be hiking in the dark. And in the summer, it's just so nice when you can still be up at a summit at like seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me today and seeing another spot in Washington that maybe you haven't heard about. I've been really trying to find places near me that would be interesting to go shoot at. And also I would highly recommend making a trip here. They have really nice um, camp spots that are open in the summer. I'm getting off the trail. Really nice camping facilities, like nice bathrooms. You can camp right on the water. There's good hiking around. It's just a really nice spot on the lake. I think especially if you have a family, this is a really nice place to bring kids in the summertime or make a trip in the winter. It's still beautiful. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you for watching as always. I hope you're doing well and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Once you've seen a